Hi, you have uh, reached the Ring Ready, home of the owner handler and dog show mentor, exclusively for owner handlers. I'm Lee Whittier, founder of Dog Show Mentor and host. And today I'm hosting this Facebook Live. Dan Sayers can't be here today. So we're going to talk a little bit about some important things that you've said you want to discuss. So this is an interactive uh, Facebook Live. I want to see your name and your breed, please, right in the chat. And I want you to tell me a little bit about what is the most important three aspects of your breed. Right? So we have 30 minutes here for you today, just for you. All right. So who's here and who would like to know more about breed standards and how judges look at breed standards and why there's such a variation, right? Hi, Denise, Golden Retrievers. You have an interesting breed standard and there's such a variation in styles in your breed and judges are gonna look at your breed standard a little differently depending on what their training was what their viewpoint is, and who their mentors were. So what are the key aspects of the Golden Retriever? And what about the Powder Puff Chinese Crested, Linda? Thank you. And hi, Angie. Hi, Tina, German Shepherds. All right. You've got an interesting breed standard as well. So what are your key breed aspects. There's no wrong answer here because this is your opinion. Hi Bev from Pittsburgh with French Bulldogs. You've got you've got bad ears, right? You've got that rise over the loin. You've got silhouette and head in the French Bulldog, right? What do you think are the most important aspects of the Frenchie? So that's what I want to hear from you. I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to start out and talk about, hi, Erica with Spinoni and Linda. Hey there, welcome back with the mini schnauzer. What are some of the key aspects of the miniature schnauzer from the Spinoni? Spinoni has a really interesting standard as well. Unusual features for its breed. So one, Denise, this one type and structure and movement. Well, okay, but what is type? So how do you define type? Hey there, Shane, how are you? Ah, the chow chow. Well, you tell me. You've got the S's, right? What are the S's? They start out with scowl, right? Square. What are the other ones? You tell me. Everybody should bring up their breed standard. And we can talk about that. Pet interior, snowshoe feet. And they're not just any snowshoe feet. They have these sort of, as my late friend Sue Vroom said, freakishly long, you can just hear Sue saying that, freakishly long digits. Okay. They have a fall over the eyes. Okay. If it's right in a sporting dog, it's usually wrong in the Spinoni. Yes. Erica, that's that's just exactly right. And Julie, hi. Hi, Julie from Montana. And you've got Cheskies and Spinoni. So that's an interesting combination uh, of dogs and some similarities, right? So Julie, what are some of the similarities in your breed? Linda says on the mini schnauzer, square, robust, good bone and movement. Right. You want that square dog, robust. When you lift that rear, it should feel heavy. Sometimes those bitches in season, I don't do that. Good bone, yeah. A, a lot of miniature schnau schnauzers are too toy-like. So you wanna make sure that they're robust with good bone. Absolutely. Ah, Denise says 11 to 12 in body length for Goldens. A moderate athletic dog. Yeah, there should be Nothing that stands out so much, right, Denise? 
and you know what about what are some other other key aspects of the golden retriever those are good ones but give me more give me things that your standard is interesting because it says this is what we want this is what we don't want this is what we want so every every paragraph practically has a this is what's correct this is what's incorrect and that's it's written quite differently for example than the afghan hound standard right the Afghan hound standard is is actually contra has been very controversial because of the line where it talks about color, and in that section it says all colors are permissible, <clears throat> but color combination color combinations that are pleasing white markings, especially on the head, are undesirable. Right, all colors are permissible but color or color combinations are pleasing, right? White markings are not pleasing in that came out. But there's been controversy about some other things. The Saluki, right? The Saluki standard has, has a phrase in there that talks about colors that are permissible. All colors are permissible, including but then it doesn't say brindle, right? So who has who here has a Saluki and wants to tell me what that what that controversy was about? All right. The African hound, by the way, is the king, right? The king. Very interesting uh, standard. Very short, but he's an aristocrat, right? Top line and character. That's that's similar characteristics of the um, Spinoni and the Chesky? Or is that each one of those has those features that are unique? Okay, keep them coming. I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really curious about what you have to say. And this is a time for you. And, you know, Weigh in on those hallmarks. Erica says soft, warm expression on a long, lean head with divergent head planes. Well said. Well said. On a square body with deep underline, a two-part top line, that 11th vertebrae, right? Low tail set and not ever angulated. Over-angulated, sorry. I was like, yeah, not ever angulated. What does that mean? Low tail set. And a long croup, like a long, like a long croup. Yeah. Linda, crested, fine bone, graceful, alert, intense, expressive, 11 to 13 inches. Yeah. And so with the crested, one of the uh, one of the features is that we're supposed to look at the judge is supposed to look at the dentition on the side of the powder puff but not on the hairless. So how does the judge bring in that aspect of the breed? How do they decide if it's important if they're missing teeth? So I'm curious as a breeder and owner and handler, what you think about that? What do you think um, the, the importance of dentition should be in a toy breed? Goldens have a height DQ. They sure do. Strong, broad head, not heavy in the flues. I should be close fitting, not loose and dark with dark rim pigment. Tails flow off the back, not held high. So what does not held high mean? How high is not high? Does it specify shouldn't be carried over the back? Or does it say just is not held high? So those are things that a judge might look at and say, well, what's high? Well, I consider high this. Well, some other people might consider high over the back. Who, who mentored you? We'd love to hear what judge would look for in Rottweilers. Well, Robert, that just happens to be my original breed. So first of all, key breed characteristic and component and hallmark is black and tan right? Black and mahogany. They should be, 
that's that is a key of the breed. Balance and proportion are primary importance, it says in the in the body and proportion section of the standard. It's very important. Now, what about tails? Tails and rottweilers are really controversial. And it's, I'm not even going to go there. But the standard does say that the set is more important than the length. But that's right after it says it should be docked one or two vertebrae. Because the sentence is broken into two sentences, now you've got the controversy. So you've got judges who are going to read that and say, well, it they are two sentences and they do mean two different things. And there are other people who are absolutely, it says it should be docked. That's it. Okay. Well-balanced square front. Square front. Not flat back. Square head. Not over 28 pounds. Oh, that must be the Frenchie. Okay, good. Uh, and and the standard and the standard does not say to ignore the tail, but you could ignore the tail, right? From the golden standard, tail never curled over the back. But as you said, how high is too high? That could be very subjective, right? So think about brain surgeons. Brain surgeons are trained at hospitals all over the world. And each of those brain surgeons goes through strict training, right? They go through years and years of very specific training. And, but each of those brain surgeons, it is my understanding, goes through a fellowship. And it's really a mentoring. A fellowship is a mentoring. And so each of those brain surgeons approaches their field and their patients differently, right? Why is it that you like one doctor and you don't like another doctor? Each doctor has a different personality, has a different approach. So you may like one judge better than another based on what their beliefs are, what their training is, and what their approach is. All right. So Robert, the Rottweiler, nine to 10. That's a proportion, nine to 10. Balance and proportion of primary importance. Why? Because that's how they can do their job. It's a trotting breed. It's trotting. It should be able to trot all day long with the cattle moving. When I see dogs, some of these dogs can barely trot twice around the ring. What about head? Well, the head is important and the proportions of the head are important. Hey, Lori, nice to see you. The head is important because of the function of the breed. It's also a guarding breed. And it's believed that that gives that those proportions of three to two give strength. That's why the muzzle should be strong. Love your Rottweiler knowledge. I had to choose. If I had to choose front or top line, head type, muzzle ratio, and how wide? <laughs> well, if I had to choose, I think everyone knows me, knows that the balance and proportion are essential. And the top line is the drivetrain. So muscle ratio and how wide, how wide is too wide? That's a question for you. There's certain questions that you throw back at the breeders and say, you need, to, you need to breed a better head. You need to breed a wider muzzle. Or they might not say that, but they might think it. So if that muzzle isn't wide enough, right? The standard doesn't say exactly how wide the muzzle is. How judge would check temperament? Ah, in a Rottweiler? 
Um, I, you know, I want to talk about the standard for a little bit. Um, and I don't, but I don't want to lose some of these other comments, Robert. So let me come back to temperament in the Rottweiler because if the standard talks about it, it very clearly. And uh, so I'm going to come back to that. Um, Erica says we're losing long hawks in Spinoni, third of the height. In losing that tibia is getting long and the hawk is getting short and the wrangulation is getting way too much. The lack of bone with puffy hair isn't what we should be looking for. <laughs> okay, you're right. But they should have a, a protective coat, right? And there's that elasticity to that gait because they have to go up. And that top line is essential in the Spinoni. They have to go over craggy mountains. I've seen some of those videos. They're really, they really create a great picture in your mind when you see a video of a Spinoni working. Lori, oh, I was hoping you would come up. The hallmarks of the English setter are the coat pattern, level head planes, well-defined stop, balance resulting in effortless ground covering movement and friendly, silly temperament. Does it say silly in the standard? <laughs> Um, also with Lori, with your breed, don't you think that the moderation is key? Really key. Okay. I will come back to it, Robert. The silhouette of a Spinoni is unmistakable. Exactly. They have got to have those lines, the head planes, the back, the croup. Absolutely. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm mincing words. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, they do have lovely temperaments, though, and they should be extremely malleable. Yes, I do. Moderate, but substantial. Yes. Yes. You want this to be the moderate of the setters. Okay. All right. So, temperament in the Rottweiler. So, the standard says that they may be aloof. So that means when I approach a Rottweiler and he pulls himself up and is willing to look me in the eye or not, right? I'm not looking him in the eye, but I could see out of my peripheral vision whether he is. And I come up and they show me the bite and the mouth. I actually like that aloofness because the aloof ones will stand their ground and stand for exam and not sit and not pull away, right? We've bred the Rottweiler in, in the last 20 years because of the insurance lobby and because of how our society and our culture is changing to have, in general, a softer temperament in the ring than what we used to have. I, but I also don't mind if they're a natural clown, right? Wagging their ta tail, silly. And I don't mind if they move during the exam. I just want to feel the musk musculature. I want to. I want to get my hands feel the coat. Is that should be a double coat? It should be a harsh outer coat. That's how they survive in the mountains of Germany, right? Okay. So they have such a range, but the standard does say that they should be willing to submit to exam. When I first started judging Rottweilers, I'll tell you this little story. I was judging them and one of the puppies sat and I examined the mouth and I, the puppy stood and I examined. And the AKC rep came to me and he said, you know, you should have excused that puppy. He didn't stand for exam. And, I, and the standard says that they must stand for exam. And I said, no, sir. Standard says that they must submit to exam. Don't say anything about standing. So there's a range of how we view that. Now, would a judge, would one judge think that the dog was not submitting to exam if they sat? I don't know. They might, they could. 
if they came from the golden retriever, for example, they might feel that that was not submitting to exam. We need to see all the teeth. Exhibitors have gotten way better at that. I, I want to congratulate 99% of the people who come in my ring. I don't know whether it's just my ring and they know that they've got to show every tooth or not. It could happen. Julie says the hallmark of the Chesky is the top line, the slight rise above the loin, not a camelback or roach. The rise does not begin at the back. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for that clarification. Very important. So that silhouette is, as Julie said earlier, very different than any other breed. So Robert says croup in a Rottweiler, it has to be straight all the way back. <laughs> as I recall, Robert, you need to check your standard. Okay. So we're talking about the brain surgeon. And so when, when AKC, um, when, when you apply to AKC to judge a breed, First of all, you're, you're applying to judge them and they, you're not given a license, there's no license. Okay. So each, we can choose from our checklist. Maybe we've done a sweepstakes. Maybe we did a sweepstakes at a national if we were really lucky. Maybe we did um, a group mentoring seminar. Denise says, I was whelping a litter at this time last week. Yay. And was listening to Dan and commented what I was doing. And Dan asked for me to let him know what I had when I was done. We ended up with six, four females and two males and a beautiful angel. Well, I'm happy about your six. And I'm sorry for the angel, but that's all we all know. It doesn't make it any easier, does it? All right. So back to the, how we, why it is that judges sometimes judge, put different emphasis. So let me go to another breed. Let's go to the Border Terrier because they have really clear hallmarks in that breed. Hallmarks would be the otter head. Um, it would be that drive and temperament, which we can't always see in the ring, but hard as nails is, is what they say in the standard. That loose pelt that we check for should be very loose. Spannable by the average man's hands. I have huge hands, huge for a woman. For anybody my hands are bigger than most men's and i can't span a lot of border terriers so what does that say about the breeding programs there's some things that breeders have to do and that will be that will be affected by the fact that if the dog is a working dog and he goes down the hole and can't get back out he's not going to reproduce the tail, the tail should be moderately short. The, the framers of the standard felt that breeders should be able to breed a moderately short tail without docking, right? Okay. So coat, spanable, racy, moderately short tail, otter head, key breed characteristics in the in the border terrier which one of those is more important well say on the first one you've got head but you've got a clunky body and you can't span it in the second one you have sort of a so-so head and you've got a beautiful racy body and then the next one you know on and on which one is the judge going to pick? Well, maybe today the ju one judge picks this one, another one just picks this one. Why? Because 
someone felt that the otter head was the key breed characteristic and they didn't care what what was behind the ears I don't blame them the next judge felt that the racy body was the more important thing why they felt that was more important as a key breed characteristic maybe it was their mentor i'll tell you a story about something that happened and i hope that the person isn't listening but if it was it's okay um so this individual had a judge change and pulled her dogs and said oh he saw this dog and this dog last week but i'm still going to give him these two dogs this week because i'm here okay so she hadn't done anything the week before so she comes out of the ring with you know every ribbon imaginable that, that same day and it was a great lesson you could never have you could never have created such a great learning arena for this for this individual because what she learned was that last week she had different competition last week it was indoors last week it was it was whatever it was her dogs felt well didn't feel well were misbehaving weren't misbehaving showed their best didn't show their best don't like mats whatever and the next what shows outdoors in the morning right so the same judge can see the same dogs differently depending on the week before right depending on how they're showing and we tell you this all the time we say you know it's it's a different it's a different day what is it what is the competition and a lot of exhibitors say oh no it's just a bad judge or oh they don't know anything right aren't the, the naysayers like that none, none of you here are like that i know but what do you think when those kind of things happen do you go to a judge multiple times under multiple circumstances <laughs> robert you're not giving up here would a german bred adrk rottweiler with fci standard of the breed be in a disadvantage in AKC confirmation show no answer necessary to this one just curious on the details of both standards you know um and and i think that's exactly right uh robert is that um you're dealing with different breed standards and what i'm going to say is that um i know someone who has a breed that they bought the dog from somebody in a different part of the country but they're showing you know, they're, they're bought an east coast dog they're showing on the west coast now the dog if they sent it out to the east coast might win a lot more because it looks looks like those dogs it doesn't look like the west coast dogs are they both correct probably right probably i don't know for sure um but they both win so the question was, should I compete on the West Coast with an East Coast dog? And the answer is, you've got to decide if you can, if you're convincing the judge that, yes, this is correct, right? Look at these virtues. So here we are, and I'd love to hear more from you and more about what's important to you in your breed so put that in the chat and uh we are <laughs> thank you robert okay we are almost out of time but i'd love to hear one last uh one last takeaway from what we did here today and when I say take away, what I mean is what struck you? What's, what is the one point that you're going to say, hey, that's what I got out of it? So we do that a lot at Dog Show Mentor, and I would love for you to put that in the chat. So save the date, August 10th. I'm going to talk about competitiveness and 
particularly as it relates to um, the Olympics. So go to my website uh, and there's going to be a link posted in the chat where you can go to my page and sign up for that webinar on August 10th. And a link will be available for a time. Karen Terrier, Varmity Expression, straight, top line, moderate. All right. Any other takeaways before we close? It always depends on the day. Be open-minded. Yes, we judge them on the day. Thanks, Lynn. It was good to see you here. All right. Lori. I do. I give judges second and even third chances. Also, it will depend on what I'm showing them. Some judges don't prefer something about a particular dog, but then later you may have a dog with a better defined stop, more leg, a different color, or what have you, and you'll have better luck. Exactly. Denise, I'm going to listen to this again because you cut out a few times and I missed some things. I'm sorry I cut out. All right. Well, this is Lee Whittier, the Dog Show Mentor, and I'm so happy that all of you are here and that we got some exciting uh, topics going. Join my Facebook group, Dog Show Mentor Owner Handlers. The best takeaway from you is print your standards and read it off, and that's right. It's easy to put it on the refrigerator, but if you don't read it, it doesn't matter. Okay, good. All right. Thank you for being here. This is Lee Whittier. We'll see you next week with Dan Sayers at ShowSite Ring Ready. Thank you to ShowSite for hosting this Facebook Live. Bye for now. <laughs>